Good morning, and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Rush Sunday Morning Bible Study. We are uh, going to conclude our series from uh, the book of Colossians uh, today, and we'll be talking about uh, relationships for Christians. These will be instructions from, from God through, through Paul to uh, the believers in Colossae, uh, but to us too, to all Christians today, on uh, the importance of relationships and how we have the opportunity, and not only the opportunity, but the obligation to uh, use our relationships uh, as a means of sharing the gospel and pointing people uh, toward Christ and pointing Christians uh, to godly living. So uh, let me lead a prayer as we start, and then we'll look at the verses. Father, in Jesus' name, it's a privilege to read your word, to study it, to try to share uh, impressions that you uh, give us from uh, your word with others. And I pray that uh, you will bless this time of Bible study, that you'll help me to say the things and have the insights that I can share with those who might uh, see and hear this, uh, this Bible study. So bless us, and may we be strengthened in our service and our commitment to you uh, through Bible study, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, this is from Colossians chapter 3, and uh, we're going to begin these focal verses uh, today at verse 18. <clears throat> it's talking about relationships. Uh, and verse 18 reads, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. And then verse 19 is going to it says, Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. So the first type of human relationships that these verses deal with are that of husband and wife. Husband and wife. Um, and uh, for those of us who are married, uh, this is a uh, uh, the blessing of marriage, a blessing of having a spouse that we can live with uh, and that we can grow in not only uh, Hopefully, our, our our knowledge, our intellectual uh, capacities, and our social interactions, how to get along with others, and, and also in, in our uh, devotion to God, uh, it's a it's for the married person. It needs to be a partnership thing. Uh, there are other passages of Scripture in the New Testament. Um, written by Paul, used by God, uh, Paul being used by God to share, where it talks about, uh, uh, warn, cautions about not being unequally yoked. And so uh, it's talking about uh, uh, how wonderful it is when married couples are both Christians and can help one another in their spiritual lives. Uh, and so this first set of verses, you notice it says, For wives to submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Now, this verse has become uh, somewhat controversial through the, through the years as, as what has sometimes been referred to as women's lib uh, movement emphasis where women uh, uh, have become, uh, have gained a greater role of involvement in all aspects of life, uh, including family, but uh, uh, in business, in society, in government, in uh, all the affairs of life, uh, th their role has in recent decades become more prominent. Now, uh, it doesn't matter how I feel about that 
or, or anyone really because it is a fact that has occurred and so with that uh, some uh, some people and some women but some others have have uh, been critical of this verse uh, from scripture about wives submitting themselves to the husbands I feel like that's demeaning to uh, a wife a woman well I'm not going to dwell on that except to say this is scripture this is from the Lord this is inspired and so this is truth insofar as the admonition uh, that uh, to bring benefit to a married couple when this uh, instruction is followed it doesn't mean it doesn't mean to take a a, a subservient role where the wife is uh, can't make any decisions has no voice no not uh, other other parts of scripture make it clear that in in the sight of God we uh, there's no difference uh, there's no difference in the sense of of uh, status or ranking uh, between a man and a woman but there are different roles uh, as scripture points out uh, that God has designed for us not everything I don't need to tell you that uh, remind you that not everything that that evolves in society and human society is uh, in line with God's uh, desires and his plans that's our problem we deviate so much but uh, uh, so this submission is one that re that respects the husband and uh, God has through scripture assigned to the husband of, of a married couple the role of leadership not of domination not of uh, of uh, of harsh uh, uh, control or anything of that nature at all because the next verse 19 says and it's natural that it would be coupled immediately with the instruction to the wife it is the instruction to the husband to love your wives uh, and treat them uh, with kindness and compassion. The verse that I have, has, God has uh, used it uh, in my life uh, to convict me many times, but to remind me is found in uh, First uh, uh, First Peter at chapter uh, three. And I can find it here, where. Uh, the Holy Spirit led Peter to write, Husbands, be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner. I think he's talking about ordinary physical weak, uh, weakerness. Uh, uh, and uh, treat them with respect and as heirs with you, joint heirs, I would say, in the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. I confess that I've not always lived up to that admonition to husbands and probably my failure has hindered my prayer life and has, uh, has uh, limited uh, the God's blessings upon me at times. But... Um, uh, husbands are to love. If we love our wives, we will treat them with respect. We will treat them with compassion. And um, we won't act in a way that leads them to become bitter or discouraged or frustrated. Uh, uh, and so these are the instructions that God gives us through this chapter of Colossians about the relationship of husband and wife. It's, these are just... You know, you could talk on that subject by itself for uh, a, a long period of time. Next, verse 20, uh, it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Uh, then it goes on to say, verse 21, Fathers, do not exasperate your children, 
so that they won't become discouraged. So the next category of relationship that we're going to look at in these verses is that of parent-child, parent-child relationships. And the instruction here is for children to obey their parents, uh, to obey, to be obedient. Um, we, you know, uh, we see the, we see obedience, the need for obedience, sometimes the lack of obedience of children to their parents, uh, all uh, around us. We've all experienced that. Uh, we were. We were children uh, uh, at one time. Uh, you may think, well, when you get as old as you are, you, you're beginning to act pretty childish. Well, that's probably true <laughs> to some extent. But I was a child uh, years ago. I like to say that uh, you know my age is catching up with me. I was complaining about this morning to my uh, wife and children about how, how slow I think I've become. I, 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 I said to them, you know, since the Queen and I turned 95, uh, I've really slowed down. <laughs> well, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, the uh, Queen of England, is 95, but I'm not yet. But I, I'm, uh, I'm getting close. I'm getting up there. Maybe, maybe the Lord will bless me, and I will make it one day. But that's up to Him. Children, uh, children need instruction. Children do not grow up knowing right, uh, knowing right, the right thing to do every time, and the wrong things to avoid. We have, I believe, I believe God has put within us <clears throat> an inherent sense of right and wrong. Uh, whether we think of that as our conscience, or uh, or uh, God's leadership, or a combination, or whatever, but. Uh, but children don't have that innate sense of the right and wrong as they're going to have to be instructed. They have to be instructed. And so that's the role of the parents in their relationship, is to instruct their children, not, uh, again, not to exercise domination over them uh, or to uh, try to control their every move or decision or thinking, but to give godly instruction so that they will benefit. Our instructions to our children should be uh, uh, for their good, for their welfare, for the welfare and good of the family relationship, but also for the good of the children as they grow up and eventually leave home and, and, and begin their own families. Uh, we need, they need that instruction. Um, and so, um, and, but then it's coupled with the instruction in verse 21. It says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Notice that it says fathers. Why doesn't it say fathers and mothers don't exasperate your children? Well, again, I think that deals with the role that God has given uh, men and husbands as the leadership role in their families. Certainly, the wives, uh, this would apply to the wives, because the wives are going to need to be teaching and instructing. In fact, they may do more of that. They may have more time and opportunity to do that. And they may do it often. They may do it better than the husband, the father. Uh, but uh, the not to exasperate you. What does that mean? Well, just don't be constantly uh, badgering them to the point that they feel beaten down and they're just discouraged and they 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 think well, I just can't I can't satisfy uh, my parents uh, that that would discourage them and he says they he says we don't want to discourage them by that kind of 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 uh, oversight and that kind of uh, exposure to parental instructions and uh, and that uh, family role. Okay, so moving on so that we can touch on, at least briefly, on all the scriptures that we have. Uh, the Verse 22 says, Slaves, obey your human master in everything. Don't work only while being 
watched as people pleasers, but work wholeheartedly fearing the Lord, slaves and masters. So the next relationship uh, that, uh, that uh, God is talking about here is that of, of today, we wouldn't call it the slave, master, slave relationship. But uh, slavery was common and prominent in the, the time that Paul uh, was inspired to write these. And uh, really, in Old Testament and New Testament times, both. And so, but today, to make that uh, have relevance and meaning and application to us today, it would be more of the employer-employee, uh, a worker and his boss, supervisor, uh, the employer relationship, employment, uh, employment. I, uh, I'm not, wasn't even in my uh, legal law, active legal career, uh, well-versed in employment law, but I had some training in it, some exposure. Uh, and there are there are a lot of laws that deal with that. Uh, there were customs, at least in the time of uh, uh, Paul, uh, but uh, there were, there was God's instruction that is found in the Old Testament and the New, and He's giving it here, and He's saying to the employee, the worker, that you need to be obedient to your boss, your supervisor, your employer, and you need to work, uh, be a good employee, a good worker, <clears throat> and you need to do your job well, uh, whether or not your supervisor or your boss is watching over you at that moment or not. Uh, you, you're obligated you know, not to just be working uh, while your employer and, or supervisors around and can see and can know, but whether they are or not, you're to do a, a good job, render uh, render good service, uh, and uh, and do that whether they're watching or not. Uh, and then uh, it says, be wholeheartedly, wholehearted in your work, and fearing the Lord. In other words, it's, it's saying, um, and it's going to say down here in verse 23, Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord, not for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ. Uh, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. These verses, the, particularly the last um, ones that I've read, they apply not only to uh, employer-employee relationship, but our our interaction with everybody, people, even family, but also other people. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But in regard to the the uh, worker, the employee, uh, admonition from the Lord here, He's saying, work. Uh, let your with the, the attitude that you're serving God, you're serving God. God gave you <clears throat> the job, uh, uh, and that we should never forget that uh, all everyone that that works or has 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 a, some type of a employment or what we call gainful employment where you're working. Uh, it's God that gave us that job, and many of us are. Uh, extremely blessed that we have have found a job, a profession, a vocation, whatever, uh, however you want to refer to it, uh, that is that we can enjoy, that I mean, maybe there, there's always things about jobs that are not pleasant and are not enjoyable, but uh, many of us have had the privilege of working in things that we really uh, find interesting and beneficial and that we can get a sense of satisfaction out of whether it be working with our hands producing a product or rendering a service i was in the, the legal profession rendering service um, and, and 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 advice 
and representation. Uh, these are blessings from God. So, of course, we're trying to uh, we're trying to please our employer, or in the case of uh, uh, of, uh, of law practice, trying to please and well represent our client, do a good service. But our highest responsibility is to God, is to God, who's blessed us with that and blessed us with the income and the um, material means to support our families and raise our children and, and all the, the responsibilities that we have and the things that we like to do from them. So that, uh, that is talking about that relationship. Now then, continuing on with that, it says, and this is moving into, we're moving right into chapter 4. That's the end of chapter 3 of Colossians. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, Masters is continuing that same thought. Employer, employee. Uh, worker, supervisor. Uh, masters, that's the employer. That's the supervisor. That's the boss. Uh, deal with your slaves, your employees, your your employment uh, subordinates justly and fairly since you know that you too have a master in heaven. That's good advice for any employer, any supervisor, uh, anyone that has uh, an uh, authority over other people employed in, in that realm. Uh, we, we are subservient we are under the authority and the instruction of God as a Christian. And so if we mistreat our employees, um, then God is not pleased with that. And we can expect to be disciplined. All right, now then, let's move on. <clears throat> um, and to these following verses in the time that we have are going to address um, godly advice and wisdom for all relationships. Devote yourself, verse 2 says, devote yourself to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us. Paul is saying that personally for himself and for his associates in the ministry, in the mission ministry. Um, pray for us also that God may open a door to us for the word, what does that mean? For the gospel, to share the gospel, to share Christian instruction, discipleship, to speak the mystery of Christ. He's referring to the gospel, um, the good news that we can be accepted by God, forgiven by God, have a, a relationship in this life and eternity with God through our uh, trust, belief, faith uh, in Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death on the cross where he died to pay for our sins he being sinless but to pay for our sins we all being sinners so that by trusting not in anything we could ever do on our own any goodness uh, our righteousness as scripture says is falls far so far short of earning the forgiveness of god of meriting god's uh, forgiveness and acceptance that is compared to filthy rags, uh, our, our best days. But, but we place our faith in what Jesus accomplished by his death on the cross. And that's the gospel. Uh, and, he, and Paul's praying for it. Uh, he, he wanted to seize every opportunity, and he wanted to have more and more opportunities. He was writing this from imprisonment, imprisonment in Rome, and uh, he says... Uh, to speak the mystery or the gospel of Christ for which I am in chains so that I may make it known as I should. Paul felt an obligation. Do you feel an obligation? Do I feel an obligation to share the gospel? I should. You should if you're a Christian. Um, he didn't save us to sit. He saved us to, to share and to to uh, help others and to grow in our in our uh, relationship with Christ. Uh, make it known as I should. I should, you should, all God's children should. Okay, then he says in verse 5, act wisely toward outsiders. 
making the most of the time. All right, what's he talking about when he says outsiders? Well, he's talking about all others other than the relationships that he's already covered, such as husband, wife, family, employers, employees, uh, other, when he says others, there's he's saying act wisely uh, toward all others, uh, others. You've got, a, you've got a, an opportunity and an obligation uh, to make your relationship with everybody. You may be a brief interaction, maybe a close friend, maybe somebody that you have contact with regularly, it may be somebody that you may only deal with one time, may encounter one time. But make the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer every person. Uh, seasoned with salt, what does that mean? Well, you might, uh, uh, you know, uh, speech, uh, salt, speech and salt, that's your speech. Uh, you might, the first thing you might think of is someone, you've heard somebody say, well, he's pretty salty with his language. And probably that's talking about uh, uh, being crude or even vulgar or uh, ungodly with your language. But the salt that he's talking about here, I believe, is uh, salt uh, does a lot of good things. Salt, Jesus used salt as a reference in his teaching, in his ministry. Uh, it preserves, uh, it, uh, it, but it also, it also stings sometimes. You get salt on a wound, it'll sting. It may be healthy, but it will sting. It'll burn. Uh, sometimes he's saying, be gracious, be gracious. Uh, uh, don't provoke uh, an argument. You, you, we all know some people that, I mean, they you can't have a conversation with them without they get to starting an argument. Well, he doesn't want us to. He wants us to be gracious. He wants us to be respectful. Um, but he also wants us to be true to our faith, our faith in God, our faith in Christ. And so sometimes uh, we, that may call for speech that uh, that stands up for for God, that uh, that admonishes somebody. We need to do it with kindness and love and respect, and we need to, as, as Scripture says, uh, take heed uh, if we think we stand, lest we fall. So, uh, but uh, sometimes when it, when it says, "So you know how you should answer uh, everyone," when you know they may ask you something, they may do something, and they may they may just watch for your response. They may do something that's ungodly, unchristian, and they may not say, "What do you think of that?" Some of them do sometimes, but they, they may just watch you to see how you react. How are we going to react? We need to know how to react. We need, to, we need God's leadership, the Holy Spirit to lead us to how to react. And it may have to be a reaction that it may sting them. It may burn a little bit, but uh, we need to do it with love. He started he start out everything saying we do it in love. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Uh, that's going to conclude our verses and our time is up. Uh, but these instructions on relationships, we don't, we, we live in relation to others. I don't know many, I know some people that uh, stay home most of the time, that they don't even like to be around people. And, uh, but uh, they'll have inevitably, everybody has interaction, sometimes, some way, somehow with other people. And, and so how we relate to others, beginning with our family, our spouses, our married couples, uh, our children, if we have children in the family and are, and are blessed by God with children, how to do that. Uh, relationship with workers, co-workers, uh, employers, employees, uh, and all others. Uh, we, have a, we have the opportunity to relate, and, and it's an obligation to be a representative of God and to act godly and to follow instructions like these. And there's many other instructions about relationships. Relationship. Life is full of relationship. We should think of them as opportunities and not as being to be in dread of having to deal with others, but to do so with thanksgiving 
and with alertness about how can we be a godly influence on others. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time that we can share thoughts that I believe you've given us uh, about uh, relationships. Help us to remember and apply this with your help and with your leadership day by day. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.